Hello, uh, welcome to the MT for Christ 24-7 podcast. This is MT Clark, and uh, this isn't just a Zoom meeting. This this here is a, a little program that we call Bible Study with the Sincatis, as we're joined today by Arthur and Susanna Sincati and my wife, Tammy Lynn. Um, Arthur has sent us to study, which is going to be on the righteousness of God. Um, but before we jump into that, I'll kick it over to uh, Arthur, who can... Uh, um, lead us in prayer, but first we'll say good morning. Um, good morning, guys. Good morning, everyone out there. Um, we're happy to be here. Good morning. Good morning. Well, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God, for uh, this day, a new day that has not occurred yet in um, all of space and time, but you have imagined it, conceived it. Um, uh, we certainly don't know when, but uh, the foundations of the earth. And now we're we're walking it out in in uh, flesh and blood, and we're we're grateful uh, for <clears throat> all that's about to unfold today, Lord God. We look uh, forward with joyful hope and anticipation, because this is a day that has never occurred before, and we're uh, grateful to be um, uh, engaged with it. And we ask for your blessing over our time together. We certainly um, ask for your blessing over all the uh, technical aspects of our meeting here this morning. We ask that you would sort that out, Lord, by the power of your Holy Spirit mm -hmm. and your name. Mm -hmm. We just declare the name of Jesus over this study and our time together, mm -hmm. that you would be honored and glorified in all that we say and do. Yes. And uh, Lord, um, I ask that your word would go forth today with power uh, to change hearts and lives, that we would uh, be transformed into the image of your son. Mm -hmm. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Okay, so um, righteousness of God, the righteousness of God, um, huge subject, uh, mm -hmm. very difficult to uh cherry pick and, and select uh, scripture mm. that I, I to try to navigate this idea. Matthew but, three, thir, three uh, Matthew six thirty three. Anyway, well, that's Matthew the one I'm. <laughs> if that one doesn't make the study, I'll be a little surprised. But Matthew six thirty three. But, but we'll <laughs> see. We'll see. Um, well, I began with uh, uh, a portion of scripture from Genesis mm. eighteen twenty which says shall not the judge of all the earth do right um and i guess that's uh abraham asking a sort of rhetorical question there right because um the answer uh, the obvious answer has got to be yes and this study um stirred in my spirit because i think the righteousness of god is a matter that we tend to take for granted mm -hmm. it's it's just there um we can't really understand it because there's it, it, it's it's not something that we we walk in it, 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 at least is you know especially according to the law all our righteousness is mingled with unrighteousness yeah. um you know isaiah says but we are all like an unclean thing and all our righteousness uh, says, <laughs> are like filthy rags. Mm -hmm. That's Isaiah 64, uh, 4. And then because of this, as even as believers, we even question the righteousness of God at times, especially in regards to situations or circumstances that we don't understand uh, or that we disagree with. You know, So mm -hmm. imagine us walking around disagree, disagreeing with God. This is the whole. This is the whole premise of today's study. But we do it all the time, right? I mean, we yeah. really do. Um, it, it, much of our prayer is consumed with disagreement with God. God, um, I, this is happening, and I don't like it. So I, I'd, I'd like you to change it. You know, I, it, it's the it's the um, <clears throat> premise or the impetus to, of us to change God's mind uh, yeah. and, and or to twist His arm, you know, so so to speak. <laughs> Arthur, you really opened up a can. Of, I mean, I don't know where the study's going, but but as for like where I've been walking and what I've been seeing in the last week and and this morning, um, I I studied um, 
Mal uh, Malachi uh, three and four, and um, yeah, basically yeah. the last two chapters of the Old Testament, and it's all about you know in that in that book the prophet talks about how um, you know supposedly you know God's people would would you know were lamenting because yeah. you know they were quote unquote doing the right thing, but the the wicked seemed to prosper and. And, yeah. you know, um, and th so they were, they were questioning God and God was, you know, was telling him that, you know, that he was coming and, you know, um, the, the wicked would not prosper. And, uh, and, and some of the, some of the people in the nation of Israel were, were saying that, yes, they do all these heavy burdens of their religion and all this stuff, but it's not, you know, it's, it's, yeah, we do it, but it doesn't really do anything for you. Um, like to, you know, like they were lamenting, like I do all this stuff for God, but he, you know, it's not, it's not for nothing, and it's it's all for nothing. And it was like, wow. And then I got people on the um, on social media um, looking at, you know, what happened to our air quality in the last week with the wildfires and everything. And and one of my Bye. Facebook friends who Bye. I share their photos all the time was saying, is this how the world ends with with the, the, the planet falling apart and everyone being apathetic? And and I, and I was like, no, that's not how the world ends. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, that's the atheistic worldview of everything falls apart and there's no end. But, you know, the Christian worldview is yeah. that don't worry about Trump or any government, the, the Christ is coming to reclaim the government. Um, you know, that's the, that's the government that'll be righteous. Um, and as for the, the earth, there'll be a new heaven and a new earth after uh, Christ rules and reigns for a thousand years. So, you know, will God get it right? You know, will the judge of the earth, you know, do right and get it right? Yeah, he will. Um, of course. You gotta, you gotta believe it. And yeah. we might not see it. And that's the thing. Those guys in the Old Testament, they didn't get to see Jesus, you know. Um, mm -hmm. And he, he came and went before we got here. So, but but we we get to we get to know who he is because of his word and because of the Holy Spirit's alive and well on the earth and convicting people to come to him and um, and not only believe in him but to do what is right and you know so I just love you know how the Holy Spirit works everywhere at once to, in these studies yeah. where it's like Arthur's like I'm gonna do something on this and I'm like oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> and like I said, even though that might not even be where the study's going, I got that to add to the mix. But well, and that that's good stuff to add to the mix because oftentimes people come to a study and they don't really have background information or they don't really have an understanding from a teacher's perspective. You know, you always want to have a little background information before you bring in a new subject. So that mm. you know it's called to have hooks to hang things on. Mm. And if the children don't have those experiences then you can't then you can't really go deep into the subject until they do and i think that god uh, treats us that way too he gives us some background information whether yeah. it's an experience or it's a study or it happens to be a verse that you go to that you didn't think you go to mm. or like the other day when arthur was reading something and he said that wasn't there before yeah, it wasn't in the right. bible there before uh, yeah it was sweetheart but <laughs> mm -hmm. See it at that point you know mm -hmm. god opens our eyes at different different points yeah. and i agree with you uh, mark about and i'm sure timmy lynn does too that in you know in just the the generation that we're working with the, as teachers and seeing these kids coming up and and seeing the level of unrighteousness that's being yeah. expressed as right and you know this just a lot of dis happening, disrespect and disapproval and mm. disregard and all these things that are happening. And people are, you know, if, if even if they're not, don't believe in God, they're shaking their fist at him and saying, why have you not made me a millionaire? Why mm -hmm. have you not, you know, done this or done that, you know? So I just think that cyclically and historically we go through this yeah. until mm -hmm. Jesus does come back. Right. Yeah, I, I just want to add that uh, uh, not God's not God is righteousness is his nature. He's yeah. not getting he's not making things he's not getting things right. He's righteous now, <laughs> and there is a progression in the natural and the terra firma that we're moving from uh, 
you know, corruption to uh, 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 incorruptible. Uh, but um, it's not to say that corruption is not, not part of God's plan. He's taking, he's, he's taking even, you know, the things that, that Satan has meant for evil, and he's, he's turning them to good, shaping and molding, uh, creating the new heavens and, or recreating the, the heavens and the earth and into the new heaven and the new earth. Uh, which we can scarcely imagine what mm. what that's that's going to be like. Although we get glimpses of it in scripture, it's going to be great. <laughs> just, yeah, right, exactly. Sure, that's sure, the sure, thing. Sure, everybody, it's going to be great. Yeah. Um, so, in the meantime, it's important, I think, for us to identify the elements of, of the problem so that we may uh, uh, be in agreement with God. That, that's the essence, right there, mm. to be in, in agreement with God. Amos 3.3 3 says, can two walk together unless they be agreed? And that's a big question. And again, it's a rhetorical question. The answer to it is no. And we want to walk in fellowship and in harmony with God. We, you know, don't want to be <clears throat> God's going in, uh, in this direction and we want to go in, in the other direction. When I was a kid, I, I, I think I, I don't remember if I shared, if I shared this. this, this book really made a mark it's probably a, a, apart from the bible it's the book that most influenced my life and it was called Artie the smarty <laughs> it was a little children's book that my mom got for me <laughs> and uh in, in oh my. The smarty. <laughs> i'm just i'm just like just tell us tell us more i want to know this i have not heard this story so i need to hear it <laughs> Well, the the general <laughs> overview of Artie the Smarty was that when all the little fish were swimming this way, Artie would swim this way. <laughs> and when all the little fish were swimming this way, Artie would swim that way. <laughs> and we we uh, you know we often treat God that way. When God's moving this way, we want to go that way, you know. And so it's like um uh what's the, the the musical that we like with uh, uh um, hello, dolly. hello dolly hello dolly like you know you go your way and i'll go my way you know so mm -hmm. it's both the same way and we want to do that with god we want to be in in agreement with him and walk with him um in 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 uh doing what what he's doing so we we uh <clears throat> to help us understand it always a good idea to go back to genesis you know i like to go back to first cause uh, what i call back to the breach um <clears throat> isaiah uh speaks of of messiah as the restorer of the breach i love that verse it's very weighty it means a lot to me i think usually even in our own lives when there's a a mishap or something goes haywire uh we could trace it back to a breach you know we could trace it back to a, a situation or a circumstance when something uh really went wrong and left yeah. the mark and okay. you know we again or again we we walked uh in 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 abject disagreement in, in an in an area of life so in genesis 3 we notice two things regarding this this subject of the righteousness of god and and agreement with god uh, the temptation that uh, Satan uh, brings before Eve is to disagree with God. All right. So that's kind of, uh, 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 you know, that's, uh, again, it's an understatement. It's, it's known. We know this, uh, but we're putting it out on the table. It's to, it's to disagree with God. He cha he's challenging God's, he's challenging God's righteousness with his, with an opinion or, or better stated with a lie. You know, he knows, to, Satan knows the truth. Okay. But he's po he's posing a lie, you know, in order to in order to put the um, you know the the hairpin in the machine so everything stops it, it, it grinds down and stops working. He's posing that God is is not only wrong but also devious. Now, now this is big, right? I mean, this is this he's mm -hmm. he's upping the ante. He's escalating the he argument. You know, mm -hmm. uh, it's not just that God's mistaken on this that that you shouldn't partake of the tree in the center of the garden, but he's actually being devious about the whole thing, you know? He's holding, so, he's holding out on us. Yeah. He's holding out on uh -huh. us. This is like Anakin Skywalker, right? <laughs> and and Obi-Wan is holding out on me. He's not letting me uh, do my thing, you know? He's holding me back. Um, consider how many times we wrestle, <clears throat> excuse me, with the same notion. <clears throat> 
so uh, uh, that that God is, you know, he's just he, he's just wrong, or he's just devious, or he's trying to crush us, or he's, you know, he's trying to mess us up. <clears throat> people struggle with this and this is a lie of of the enemy uh and a blatant lie that we trace right back to the beginning mm -hmm. secondly by by eating of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil we're cast into a state of always having to debate what's right what is right and in, in uh <clears throat> on our own without even satan's temptation uh, you know satan does his thing it's almost like satan does his thing he puts the you know the glitch in in the matrix and then he walks away and lets it unravel uh it's the um you know we you talk about uh deism where the clockmaker winds up the clock uh and it uh, it unwinds <laughs> well this is satanic deism you know un yeah. anti-deism because mm -hmm. satan uh you know puts the the, the little problem in the mechanism and then walks away and, and lets the clock break by itself because as soon as we participate mm. in the, the the tree of the knowledge of good and evil now now the argument begins now everything is a controversy everything is is you know, it's a debate mm. we've got to weigh the pros and cons and try mm. to uh, uh get to situations right choices and this we see has plagued our <laughs> culture uh, throughout history, the magnitude of this debate takes on uh, such you know, such a weight, and the divisiveness that in, ensues from it is 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 huge. And, and of course, it's we're seeing it particularly, you know, as Susanna pointed out in in our culture today. Divisiveness yeah. is is like the hallmark of of uh, mm -hmm. our culture today, and it's horrible. Um, yeah. and, and again, we know that this is from the the pit of hell, and and it's from us trying to figure things out <clears throat> on our own, apart from God. So R.C. Sproul uh, did a series of teachings on philosophical teachings called the consequences of ideas. And mm. I'm not gonna draw anything from that teaching, but the title, uh, <clears throat> the, the consequence of our ideas is, is huge. And what we're seeing play out is as, as people have abandoned the, you know, the question, unfortunately, the question isn't anymore, has God said? The question is, you know, uh, God is, you know, for many people, there's the, it's a foregone conclusion that there is no God and yeah. that we have to figure things out for ourselves. And, and with that, you know, nihilistic worldview of everything being without meaning and purpose, that's all about fulfilling your own desires, your own, your own dreams, yeah. you know, because this life is all you get or, you know, basically, so live it up and do what you want. And who's to tell you what's right and wrong, um, where right. you put yourself as, as the, the, you know, the judge of righteousness, but in, in other ways, because, you know, Satan started that endless speculations that end up with things like the, um, you know, theoretical physics, like the multiverse. Um, mm, recently, right. I've heard heard a supposed Christian teacher, and I don't know if she's just a fan of the Marvel movies and said everyone in the multiverse, you know, <laughs> like as some sort of all encompassing blessing to people. But when you enter, when you enter, when you when you present that phrase, the multiverse, that's that's the ultimate uh, denial of, of of God. I mean, you know, it's it's a theoretical, hypothetical thing that um, even the physicists who, who talk about it tell you it's not a scientific hype. It's a it's not even a scientific hypothesis, but is a theoretical philosophy. Um, yeah. So they won't even put science anywhere near it, but they'll they'll endlessly discuss it, and and thus uh, science fiction gets out there, and what gets out there. Um, really impacts us so what entertains us you know will lead us yeah. astray and so these ideas that are just <laughs> theoretical ideas hypothetical ponderings if you will um when there's any science behind it because they are scientific in nature in terms of the pondering um they get this weight behind them where people actually start to it becomes a foregone conclusion that these things might exist or, or whatever when really they're just the theoretical thought of someone saying hey you know that every choice we make would make another universe you know like hey that's a nice idea um but yeah. 
that's not that's not reality. <laughs> um, right. you know, basically, we can't go back and change the things we've done. And there's no alternate universe that exists that that is was created when we had to make a decision. Um, right. And and so these consequences of ideas basically just draw us draw us further and further a, a, a away from the Lord. Um, and like the, the idea that we have to save the environment, um, you know, in the end, our, our environment ends after about 100 years. Um, and now granted, yep. there's the next generation to be concerned about, but we're not the creator of this world. And as far as I can see, we're not going to be the ones to fix it. And luckily, there, now that's pretty, uh, that's a hopeless view. But right. the, the good news is that, no, this isn't how the world ends. Um, mm. We're told that the Lord Jesus will come back, um, basically, and rule and reign. You know, and, and yeah. the time frame on that is a hundred, a thousand years, and then you know, then the new heaven and new earth will come. So you know, don't worry about the environment. If there's <laughs> policies that need to be put in place, the Lord will do it. Um, yeah. now, it doesn't mean we shouldn't be good stewards now, um, but right. but right. but your whole stance on that is an atheistic stance when you're so concerned about this world because this is all there is. Well, that's not that's not true. It's a right. lie, um, right. and it's from the father of lies, and he he's got all kinds of lies, and he'll give you whatever one yeah. you want to think about and entertain yourself with, and mm -hmm. and it all every one of them leads away leads us away from God, and mm -hmm. uh, so yeah. just. Those are the consequences of our ideas, is what I was thinking. Well, I, well, I see your R.C. Sproul quote and, and raise you with John Stone Street, who, mm -hmm. who often says ideas have consequences and bad ideas have victims. Yeah, mm -hmm. and that's happening yeah. every day. Right. Yeah, that's so definitely happening. Right. Again. So uh, uh, well said, Mark. And, and ideas definitely do have consequences. And these ideas are the stirrings of men's hearts having you know partaken in the tree of the knowledge of good and evil and um sometimes it's just driven towards entertainment uh our ravenous desire for entertainment uh, as we were talking i'm i'm drawn in my imagine in my imagination right to the Areopagus, where the Greeks were just trafficking in wisdom. It really didn't matter if, if anybody's oratory had any uh, basis in truth, uh, so long as it was entertaining and maybe seemed plausible, or, or actually the less plausible it seemed, the more entertaining, right? Like the uh, uh, multiverse <clears throat> versus... Um, you know, the more titillating it was. So this is what we're cast into. This is the kind of, of sea of confusion that we find ourselves cast into. For, you know, so for this reason, you know, God gives us his word as a guide. But it, what do we do with that? We even debate his word uh, with doubt and interpretation, right? You know, we, yeah. we even take that and we'll say, okay, it's pliable, right? We're going, we're going, no, it's not. No, uh, God's word is eternal. It's inerrant. Not one, we were reading in, in Matthew's gospel, you know, last week that not one, uh, heaven and earth will pass away, but not one jot or tittle will pass away from, from the word of God. So <clears throat> there's a truth, there is, is an established righteousness there. Um, we're always trying to chip away at it. Um, but, um, let's move on <laughs> in our opening portion of scripture. You know, uh, we see Ab Abraham cautiously debating with God over the righteousness of destroying Sodom and Gomorrah. Um, and doubtlessly Abraham remembers the account of the flood and the, and rightly fears, uh, the, the wrath of God. <clears throat> Little does Abraham know that there is not even one righteous uh, on the whole face of the earth. And the only reason that God is speaking with him is because of his sovereign choice. Psalm 14, two and three says, the Lord looks down from heaven upon the children of men to see if there are any who understand, who seek God. They have all turned aside. They have t altogether become corrupt. There is none that does good. No, not one. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. <laughs> this yeah. is comparison contrast of the righteousness of God versus the righteousness of man or the perceived righteousness of man. Um, uh, because uh, 
of God's mercy, he only destroys Sodom and Gomorrah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, because right. their unrighteousness had become exponentially out of control. Um, it, right. talk about yeah, yeah. We don't know Abraham's. Idea. We don't know Abraham's motivations there. Obviously, he doesn't want anyone to die. I guess. Um, sure. But yeah, if, if he lets him do this in Sodom and Gomorrah, what's the him from letting God judge the entire earth again? So yeah, so right. A, yeah, yeah. I, I never yeah. thought of that. Exactly. So um, <clears throat> it's a uh, uh, an interesting and, and a weighty uh, portion of scripture. I'd uh, I'd like to take a look at it because there's some you know there's just some. Uh, things going on, the, the, the manners in, in, in which um, Abraham poses his questions. So I'm reading in, in Genesis uh, 18, starting in verse 16. It says, then uh, uh, men arose from there and looked toward Sodom. And Abraham went with them to send them on their way. And the Lord said, shall I hide from Abraham what I am, what I am doing? <laughs> Abraham's like what? <laughs> Great, you know, uh, we could just camp there for an hour. Uh, the the Lord. So since Abraham surely uh, shall surely become a great and mighty nation, and all nations of the earth shall be blessed in him, for I have known him in order that he may command his children and his household after him, that they keep the way of the Lord and do righteousness and justice that the Lord may bring to Abraham what he has spoken to him. <clears throat> Boy, there's just such rich content there. And, and again, mm. we can go off on all kinds of rabbit trails. And the Lord said, because the outcry against Sodom and Gomorrah is great, and because their sin is very grave, I will go down now and see whether they have all done altogether according to the outcry against it that has come to me and if not i will know then the men turned away from there and abraham and, and went toward sodom but abraham still stood before the lord and abraham came near and said uh, would you also destroy the righteous with the wicked suppose there were 50 righteous within the city would you also destroy the uh, place and not spare it for the 50 righteous that were in it. Far be it from you, uh, for you, uh, to do such a thing as this, to slay the righteous with the wicked, so that the righteous should be as the wicked. Far be it from you, shall not the judge of all the earth do right. So the Lord said, if I find in Sodom 50 righteous within the city, then I will spare all the place for their sakes. Then Abraham answered and said, Indeed, I who am but dust and ashes, this, this true statement, Abraham, have mm. taken upon myself to speak to the Lord. Suppose there were five less than 50 righteous. Would you destroy all of the city for the lack of five? So he said, If I find there 45, I will not destroy it. And he spoke to him yet again and said, suppose there should be 40 found <clears throat> there. So he said, I will not do it for the sake of the 40. Then he said, let not, you know, Lord's just really itching to destroy Abraham right now. <laughs> so, <laughs> he didn't have a, a plan for his life. And, and he said, let not the Lord be angry. <laughs> yeah, you better say that. And I will, and I will speak. So suppose 30 uh, should be found there. So he said, I will not do it for uh, if I find 30 there. And he said, indeed, now I have taken it upon myself to speak to the Lord. Suppose 20 should be found there. And he said, I would not destroy it for the sake of the 20. Then he said, let not the Lord be angry and I will speak. But once more, suppose 10 should be found there. And he said, I will not destroy it for the sake of the 10. Apparently, there were not even 10. This is a great indictment on our culture, you know, mm -hmm. that, uh, uh, that um, uh, we've got to remain faithful for the sake of the culture, you know, because in the end times when the church is taken up, all hell breaks loose on earth. Right? Right. And um, the Lord uh, went his way uh, as soon as he had finished speaking with Abraham, probably shaking his head, you know, <laughs> can you just mm -hmm. see? 
<laughs> it makes me think of a child and a parent. You know? yeah. well, can I say it for five more minutes? Yeah. yeah. Well, can I say it for two more minutes? Right. You know, and the parent, okay, okay, two more minutes. Now it's mm. turned into 30 minutes, you know, but the whole conversation took 30 minutes. Yeah, the whole conversation you know? took 30 more minutes. Uh, but I also boy. think that it, it's also that concept that God knows what's in Sodom and Gomorrah. Yeah. You know, you know the truth. Yeah. And apparently Abraham doesn't. Abraham and and, and I mean, there's that there's 50 righteous people wandering around. <laughs> right. And I mean, there's the prophetic on this too. I mean, th this is this is an end times prophetic, you know, parallel. Uh, basically, yes. the story of uh, you know Sodom and Gomorrah and Lot. A lot lived in the in the midst of of, of wickedness, and mm -hmm. and the Lord comes to judge Sodom and Gomorrah, and He doesn't. You know, this should give the you know this should give the the, the body of Christ great hope. Um, you know, because he takes the righteous and he and he and he leads them away from the destruction, away from the judgment. So yeah. anybody who doesn't have, you know, who might have other world, you know, end times views <laughs> of, you know, being in the midst of the tribulation, I would say, well, why did why did he rescue his righteous people time and time again? Now, granted, they could also point out all the suffering that sometimes happens. Um, but but I think it's a parallel to the end times. In fact, that. The, and you know Malachi will back you up if you want to see that that he delivers the righteous away from the judgment and that the righteous sure. will walk out in the ashes of the wicked as they say in Malachi and and so but the thing is it's not just you know uh live live in the midst of the wicked and and stay there um you know the 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 mm -hmm. the, the, the parallel is also for repentance and the fact that you have to not only believe in the Lord and what the Lord tells you, but you have to get up and leave. You have to, you have to repent. You have to follow him to salvation. You have to follow him in righteousness to yep. your deliverance from evil, <laughs> you know? So, um, a lot, that, you know, it's, there's a lot in scripture, man. Um, <laughs> you know, yeah. it's like, oh yeah, you know, it's not this e easy believism it isn't really it. You know, we are called to be holy and to follow and, and to forsake yeah. that which is wicked and, you know, follow what is good. Right. So Paul goes on and, uh, and quotes Isaiah um, in Romans 9, 29. Unless the Lord of Sabaoth had left the seed, we would have become like Sodom and we would have been made like Gomorrah. There you go. So always, a remnant. Always. always a remnant in, in God's righteous vision. He has a purpose and a plan that's not going to be thwarted. And he leaves a seed out of his own grace and mercy and fidelity to his own clan. Mm -hmm. The seed of the children of Abraham, not of the flesh. OK, you know, because the, this is what the Pharisees thought. We yeah. we have Abraham as, as our father. We're good. We're OK. Yeah, we're good. yeah the <laughs> salvation by proxy or cultural tradition or, you know, biology is the thing. You know, it's yeah. not there. Sorry. You, know, you right. have to be right. be his spiritual children. You know, we must be born of the yep. spirit. We must be born again, born from above, as Christ said. Right. Well, I like the, the verse that you come back with, with where uh, James says, even the demons believe. Yeah. Yeah. We I'm see. Glad you believe. That's great. Yeah. Even the demons believe. We it's see it's form. it's those who walk in the in the faith of Abraham in Romans 4 13. Mm -hmm. But it, it's it's one matter to believe in God. Uh, James says, even the demons believe and tremble. But it's yet another matter to believe God and to take him at his word. And, and this is the, the, the core and the heart of what we're getting to is this agreement, agreeing with God, mm. um, quenching the argument with God and, 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 and the debate. <laughs> and, like, and like I said, you know, in the beginning, it's like yeah. that extends, you know, not to who Jesus was and what he did and everything else that, that applies to us personally and yeah. for the future. You know, like I said, do you believe, you know, I always go to John 11 when Christ went to Martha and said, do you believe this? You, you know, yeah, I believe in the resurrection. Sort of like, yeah, I get it. Yeah. Someday, right. far away. Okay. And he's like, no, 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 no. He said, no, 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 no. Do you believe this? And then, you know, to prove that that, that future resurrection was true, 
he yeah. raises Lazarus from the dead. Like this right. is something you can believe in, like with right. all your being as in re this is really going to happen. And uh -huh. yeah, the future fulfillment, the future resurrection isn't here and now, but I'll show you that it's true. And uh -huh. there it is. Uh -huh. Right, right. Um, and it's interesting that you bring up the Lazarus resurrection because I was reading in one of my devotions um, the other morning about healing and things like that and how, you know, there are healings and miraculous healings, but, you know, also in God's plan is we get old and we wear out and we go to heaven, you know, or we, we yeah. die. Yeah, Lazarus did. And it's okay. <laughs> and Lazarus, but you know, in, in many of the healings that was being brought up in this, this, this little devotional book on healings, it talks about, you know, Jairus's daughter, well, she had just died. And, you know, the the people that were walking with the the bearing, the, the boy in the casket, he had Maybe. just died. Oh, yeah. You know, but Lazarus was dead. Mm -hmm. Four he's, days he's dead, dead. dead. And as Martha said, he stinketh. Yeah. Oh. yeah. So, I mean, this was not just raise somebody from the dead just because, you know, where you could be saying, well, he, they just swooned. Resuscitated him, right. Resuscitated him. No, he was dead. Yeah. And this was absolute proof to Mary and Martha that the resurrection is now. Mm -hmm. Is yeah. now Jesus. And he is the resurrection. He is the resurrection. Right. Um, and this is, you know, this is always the purpose for miracles, uh, not to entertain us, um, not even for Lazarus benefit, but to demonstrate the glory of God. And in the glory of God, we, we see the righteousness of God. Uh, we, we, can't, we can't miss that. We, we're mm -hmm. going to be immediately captivated by the righteousness of God, um, okay. by witnessing his glory. We've you know, come up to the place where, therefore, the word became flesh and, and dwelt among us. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we, we took the word. Um, and we debated it <laughs> and we uh, uh, analyzed it. And Pastor Finn used to say, analysis is the paralysis of the church. <laughs> so we took the word and we, you know, we squeezed it and tipped it upside down and shook it and did all Rest kinds of things it. with it. Um, and uh, Jesus confounded the order of uh, Psalm 14, which we used earlier, because there was uh, no debate in him. There was no debate in, in Jesus. Uh, most assuredly, in John uh, 5, 19, it said, Jesus is speaking. He says, most assuredly, I say to you, the son can do, that should be a capital S, can, the son can do nothing of himself. But he does, but what he sees the father do for whatever he does, the son does in like manner mm -hmm. so we know that there's perfect harmony and perfect agreement in in the godhead you know there's not there's not a uh a, a tension or a constant argument or debate going on within the godhead and therefore this is um uh this is my kingdom come my will be done on earth as it is in heaven uh that we're <clears throat> uh longing for philippians 2 8 says that uh, the obedience was even to the point of death on the cross, mm -hmm. right? So he walked out this obedience even even to the point of death on the cross. Uh, and I know that there are people who often, when I talk about this kind of thing, they debate and say, well, Jesus did argue with God. He said, can this cup pass from me? I don't want to do this. Can I do it another way? Yeah. You know, yes, he did talk to God about that, but wouldn't somebody talk to to you know the person in charge and say you know surely there's another way we can do this but in the end he says yeah not my will but your will be done and you know i think that that it's not that it gives us credibility to debate god but it does give us ability to go to mm -hmm. a loving father and say yeah i don't understand this mm -hmm. can right. you help me right so, yeah yeah and it shows us Jesus. that Jesus, you know, did suffer just as we do. And mm -hmm. that he was mm -hmm. tempted in every way that we are. Um, mm -hmm. But in the end, he chose, to, you know, and I mean, we're talking a sentence difference here, guys. <laughs> you know, the debate didn't last very long. <laughs> like, let this cup pass from every butt <laughs> immediately. Yeah. Right, 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 right. right. Yeah. Well, I, thanks for bringing up that verse because... This verse is, is classic demonstration of Jesus' full humanity 
he was, he was fully human and he was about to endure uh, a suffering that um, was, horrific. Uh, was horrific and, and no one else had, had ever uh, suffered in such a way. Certainly people have suffered torture and, and, and things, maybe even more gruesome than the cross. But we know that there was uh, uh, soulish and, and spiritual dynamics going on there that we can't even, we can't even fathom. And the greatest suffering is, was uh, the father turning his face away and the mm-hmm. sin of the world, mm-hmm. the whole world coming upon, upon the shoulders of, of Christ on, on the cross. Um, because of that atoning death, we have we have peace with God, mm-hmm. and the debate's no longer necessary. <laughs> this is a key mm-hmm. point. The debate is no longer necessary mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. now, uh, uh, because we're fully human <clears throat> and spiritual at the same mm-hmm. time. But you know, we're cast into the 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 debate. You know, we're cast into the garden oh. motif because we hurt. Uh, mm-hmm, oftentimes, mm-hmm. you know, hurt is going to drive us to that, to the question mark, to the, you know, to the edge mm-hmm. of, of wondering, you, you know, so many things, even, am, am, am I even doing the will of God? I had a young, young man, you know, wondering, I wonder sometimes if I'm even saved, you know, that's, mm-hmm. I mean, I, 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 any legitimate question yeah, has that uh, any legitimate <laughs> Christian has that uh, uh, uh-huh. question mark uh-huh. raised up per- periodically in their life because the- Satan comes in and says yeah. oh, you think you're really saved you know you just you know cut that person yeah. off while you're driving in your car you know it can be the littlest thing yeah they Satan's were a jerk like, you saw what happened stop it <laughs> <laughs> not true um, but my point is is that that just you know when you go back to genesis you go back to the original statement the original lie that's what satan does to you all day long is he drops these little bitty little bitty things yeah did you see that did you see how she looked at you did you see see how his tone of voice when he spoke to you you know all of this comes out, and then you get a multitude of things. That at the end of the day, you're like, "Oh, I can't possibly be saved. This mm-hmm. is terrible because I thought all these terrible things, and I believe oh. all these terrible things." When so we, we have to go back to the Word and say, "No, Jesus, save me. He loves me. Yeah. I'm I'm God's own. I belong to Him. Shut your mouth, Satan. I'm only going to listen to the what God calls me and tells me." Mm, right. And that's where you have to go, and that's when the debate right. stops. It's faith, and you, you, you rightly point out that it's by faith we're saved, and that we just have to be, have faith that we did this yeah, and yeah. it's done. Because uh, otherwise, there'll be plenty of time to doubt. I've recently just reconnected one of one of the guys that I was uh, I, I was teaching in uh, a Freedom in Christ class, and he he was he, in the Freedom in Christ class, you get to a point where you go through the steps of Freedom in Christ, the prayerful repentance process. And part of that is you have to give me paperwork about your background so we can you know, address all the areas. Well, we got to that point in the class and it was time to submit your paperwork. And suddenly the guy was like, no, I think I'm good. I don't have to go through the steps. You know, uh, we're good to go. Um, and then he stopped coming. Well, he's reconnected me. Um, he never went to the steps. He just disappeared from the class. Class is only so long and ends and you never really know what happens to people sometimes. Um, yeah. but now I do know, um, because I reconnected with him, uh, shortly after he left the freedom in Christ class, he fell into sin and he got a DWI and he's, he ended up being because of it, his life was destroyed to, to a certain extent. He was homeless for a while and now he's living with his parents again. Um, you know, and trying to get his license back and, and get everything reconnected. And, and it's because he, he, he walked away. But what he confessed to me was like, well, as we were going deeper into the class, he, because he was in a righteous environment where we were, you know, uh, preaching the righteousness of God and personal responsibility and the truth of God's word and a righteous community of brothers who were in agreement, he started to get what I would call spiritual attacks, basically of doubt. And Mm -hmm. from when Mm -hmm. he was like all on board and actually contributing to the discussion, I didn't notice, but he told me, he said he felt anxiety and he Mm -hmm. 
he didn't feel free to join in and he felt all weird. And then sure enough, like I said, you know, he says he filled out the paperwork. I never got it. And he never, you know, he never came back, but he's back now. And so now we're going to lead him through the steps bit by bit, one thing at a time um, uh-huh. to, to, to clear up the stuff that wasn't cleared up before. And his big struggle, just like the young man you're counseling, is, you know, sometimes I don't even know if I'm saved. Once saved, always saved. All these theological debates. Yeah, sure. I'm like, you know, the scripture tells us, you know, endless genealogies and these theological debates are of little or no value. And, you know, we have to, we have to agree by faith you know, mm. that Christ is Lord. We put our faith in him and then we follow him. And when we, when we, and live with the, the consequences of those ideas, which is to live by faith in the power of the Holy Spirit and repent of our sin. And the problem with, with these people who, who, you know, have that issue of, am I even saved is because they haven't repented of their sin. Generally, yeah. um, right. you know, because I'm living like this, I can't be a Christian. Well, you're sinning. And Bonhoeffer rightly said, you know, hmm. those who believe obey and those yeah. who obey believe. In other words, you know, I don't, I'm not, I'm like acting like this, then don't do that. And that goes right back as we point to Genesis time and time again, right to Uh Cain in Genesis when he's, Uh his sacrifice wasn't accepted. And he said, no, you know, God said, why is your countenance fallen? Don't you know, if you do what is right, you'll be accepted. And if not, sin's knocking at the door. And so, you know, all those theological debates and atheists do it, you know, the atheist questions always, it's never a matter of, of you know the the evidence of for god it's always a matter of of what i want to do morally you know it was, it was mm-hmm. you know i want to go do what i want to do according to my sexual ethics or whatever not god yes yeah. that, yeah. that's always the implication is, is our behaviors and then we yeah. end up throwing out you know we have to throw god away because otherwise we know we're not living right and so we just negate god and his righteousness and you know say everything's fine but yeah, yeah, when we struggle with these things, it's all because it's a, it's a theological debate added to the fact that we don't want to repent and yeah. follow That's, the Lord. So sure, so sure. well said, Mark. I was pondering a way to weave that in into the study, and you, you did it beautifully. The, the the classic scripture that comes to mind is the woman at the well, um, steeped in unrighteousness and sin. Uh, again, of a sexual nature, which is often just, you know, often the, 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 the watershed moment right there. And nobody's going to tell me, you know, that I can't have five husbands or this, whatever. And mm-hmm. here, here she is. Uh, Jesus is, is scratching uh, deeper than just the surface. And, uh, and she immediately wants to throw up a, a theological, a theological debate. Oh, hey, no, uh, uh, <laughs> we worship here yeah, and they worship there. Right. I mean, what is right? Yeah, exactly. So, uh, right. Follow the Lord. Repent of your sin. You know? yeah. We on. do this all the time. Uh, and, and even if it's not a theological debate, you know, <laughs> we always bring up, we always try to, to you know, sidewise the uh, conversation. Something else. Bring up a different, yeah. a different thought. Bring up yeah. a different, you know, some, something that's going to yeah, change. Something, Take you, the you, focus you off of me what, <laughs> and put it on to something else. You know what, everybody, uh, the, uh, oftentimes if I'm sharing the gospel, it, it, especially with, you know, like the, the new atheist or the, the uh, somebody who's got some education or something, they, mm-hmm. all, they almost in, inevitably ask me if I've, if I've read the gospel of, of Didymus. You know, right. I'm like, what does that got to do with anything? You have know, you, like, have you read any <laughs> heretical teachings? Yeah. You know, like, are, yeah. are you serious? And again, it's this, it's the old argument that it's God, the hidden knowledge, hidden and that's knowledge. the occult. You got to have the hidden knowledge and hidden right. God's holding out on us. Yeah. We got to get the real thing. You know, the Gnostics and everything else. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, in any event, uh, like I said, we we debate matters. Uh, that we don't understand, but it's like, you know, uh, being declared guilty by a judge and then, or, or not guilty by a judge and then arguing with him afterwards. You know, there's like, what's the point of that? 
uh, arguing you. with the judge over the, you know, the 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 decorations in the courtroom or his uh, his uh, black robe or arguing over trivial matters. We're declared not guilty. There, there are no other options. You know, there's no. <laughs> there's a great episode of the odd couple where you know felix uh, is declared you know, or oscar is declared not guilty or one or the other and, yeah and he wants to argue with the judge and the judge says there's only guilty or not guilty there's no i'm sorry or other options or here or anything like that so um <clears throat> we want to uh uh, we want to continue the argument and mm -hmm. and the only place that the argument you know s stems from is our own uh uh, uh self-righteousness mm -hmm. our, our self-righteousness that that stimulates the, the argument mm -hmm. uh in in the cross god's righteousness and mercy the same time right are on full display mm -hmm. uh, we see that 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 tension that we can't even sort out or comprehend on our own but god does it in in one majestic demonstration of grace mm -hmm. at the cross and um there's there's really no point in arguing with it mm -hmm. he uh does what is right and there is no debate about his love mm -hmm. <laughs> in that matter we don't we don't stand at, at the foot of the cross and, and debate whether Jesus really loved us or not, you know. Uh, so, and again, so it's it's debate that that is being quenched. Romans three twenty one, in conclusion, it says, but now the righteousness of God apart from the law is revealed, being witnessed by the law and the prophets, even the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ to all and on all who believe. For there is no difference for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. That's back to Psalm 14, um, being justified freely by his grace through the, uh, through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God set forth as a propitiation by his blood through faith to demonstrate his righteousness because in his forbearance, Mm -hmm. God, it, it is forbearance. God didn't destroy everybody. He only destroyed God, Sodom and Gomorrah. It is forbearance. God has passed over the sins that were were previously committed. So, um, give us the Matthew. Uh, I, I just, you know, I pulled it up. You got it. You can just feel it in your spirit because my Bible app is open it. and it's right there probably better than 48 font on your screen right now you're like, he's got that Matthew 6 verse up and he does um, basically Matthew 6 33 says but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things yeah. shall be added to you that's Jesus yeah, yeah. telling you that and you know his righteousness is bound in his word Jesus is yeah, the word right. Jesus is God's righteousness. And like, if, if you want to get lost in theological debates, you can just ponder Matthew 6, 33, and just look at the word righteousness and all that it means in that verse, because it's coming right from Jesus. It's pointing to, you know, it, it, you know, his, he, it is Jesus. It's God. It's, it's everything. Um, yeah. His, his standard for living, his way of salvation his representation of himself on the earth and you know it's 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 the righteousness of god is christ and seek it seek first the kingdom yeah. and his righteousness and everything everything you want to know you know right. that's what because that's that's what the that whole discourse before that is you know what shall we eat what shall we drink you know what shall we wear what's life about you know all of it you want to know all of it seek first the kingdom of god and his righteousness and you know, right. that, to me jesus is saying that so follow me i should have finished that um uh romans 3 uh verse uh i stopped at the comma it was it was one of paul's you know run-on sentences but he he, he finished never stop at the comma he finishes that thought by saying to demonstrate at the present time his righteousness that he might be just and the justifier of the one who has faith in Jesus. But see, yeah, that, the yeah, Holy Spirit set that up too. He wanted you to stop at the comma because you had to put it after what I said. 
Yeah, yeah, thank God. Thank right. God. Yeah. He is. He's he so is amazing. so good. It really, yeah. He's yeah. And, and he's right. You know, he's he did it right. You know, yeah. he did it. He did it right. And and we're, we're not. We didn't. We don't come to debate that in our Bible oh. study. We come to exalt it and put mm -hmm. it on display. Mm -hmm. The righteousness of God is evident to us. We take it for granted sometimes, and then again we we we're uh, uh, tempted to arm wrestle with God and to say, and to question his, his righteousness. Mm -hmm. But in truth, I, I've, I've heard, I heard somebody say, I, I don't remember who I heard it from first, uh, but it, it's been said that when, when you, you get to heaven and you, if you have you're questionable, but you have opportunity to look back on your life and everything that happened, both the good and, and the bad, the hardships, you will say to God, I wouldn't have changed a single thing. Because the, the, the righteousness of the whole plan, the rightness of the whole plan will be made evident to you and you will mm -hmm. see how the whole puzzle fits together. And the puzzle is the glory of God. You should be so captivated by, you just say, no, I wouldn't have changed a single thing. Yeah, no multiverse. No, oh, I should have changed no, that one thing. Don't need, one. Don't need a multiverse. I can change it. No, 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 no. <laughs> this is God's no. plan. Oh, we don't need the gospel of it works all <laughs> things together for our good, you know? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, on that note, brother, uh, I, I suggest that you pray. <laughs> amen, amen. <laughs> Lord God, <laughs> Heavenly Father, thank you for bringing us together today to, to look at your righteousness and, and to be encouraged um, that, that the, the judge of all the earth will will do what's right and he's has done what's right and you work all things together for good because you are good and you are holy and you are sovereign and there's nothing outside of your will not one sparrow falls to the earth without your knowledge lord so we know that as chaotic as crazy as things are that you're above above it all and that you're directing all things in for your righteous plan and lord we just thank you for re reaching out um through eternity and showing men um, the truth and that that tradition of revelation has come to us personally that you've shown us how good you are and that you caused us to bow the knee and make jesus our lord and savior lord we just thank you for for what you have done for us and we thank you for what you will do with us and through us um, when we decide to keep following you uh, Lord, we just thank you so much for everything that's come out of this Bible study. Lord, we pray for anyone who might be listening or, um, or watching today's message that they'd be blessed. And Lord, today is our day to celebrate you. And uh, so we ask that you go forth and with your Holy Spirit and anoint the pastors and preachers out there to uh, deliver your word and truth and to bring people to repentance and to welcome people into the kingdom of God. We pray for you to anoint the uh, worship uh, uh, teams and all the servants of the house, houses of the Lord throughout the earth, um, that they would represent you in spirit and truth and uh, to give you glory. Lord, we thank you, we praise you, and we love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Well, that was another righteous study, brother. I mean, it was so <laughs> good. And, you know, I just... Uh, like I said, there's there's the words on the page, there's the words on the outline, and then there's everything in between. And and, you know, yes. and, and, the, and the Lord fills in the gaps. He stands in the breach, and uh, yes, he brings out. He takes takes the foolish things and and, and uses them for His purposes. And uh, uh, it's a blessing to be part of it. And uh, I just love it. Um, and so anyone who's listening or watching, we invite you to check out more of these, these studies uh, as our whole archive goes back to 2021 um, we, on our YouTube channel. You can check it out. And uh, I want to give a praise report to uh, uh, the gentleman on Reddit. His name's King of Spain. As he pointed out yesterday, my podcast was incomplete and I had to go back and re-record it. Um, but it's, it's just sort of funny that... You know, there's people out there that are listening and, and are, are, are watching what we do as our numbers on, I don't know what the numbers mean, but the numbers seem to have been a little bit higher lately yeah. um, on, on the YouTube. And uh, so we really appreciate anyone who's checking out uh, our messages, our studies, our teachings. 
And um, we invite you yeah. to you know, join us for next week as we prayerfully, you know, plan as if God will will it to do another yeah. study. And um, invite you to check out the uh, yeah. the blog yeah. and the podcast, the YouTube channel, and the uh, everything we do. Because all we want to do is is point to Jesus Christ and the righteous life of following Him that results uh, of a life in the Spirit. So. Mm -hmm. um, from me, Susanna, Arthur, and uh, Tammy Lynn, we say good morning and God bless you all. God bless. Amen.